Okay, so today I'm going to show you how I installed a phone charger cable on my 2003 Honda VTX 1800C. Uh, first, this is the mount I use. It's made by RAM and it works really good. Uh, it uh, just connects to your handlebar. They do have other ends for this where you could connect it here. Um, they have a few others as well. I believe they even make a, a mount that uh, connects up here. Um, so this is the charge cable that my phone happens to use. So this is what I used. And I used a 10 foot cable. I've got it routed along with the factory wiring harness and clutch line. And then it follows the clutch line here all along the backbone of the bike where it comes out here where you end up with the excess. And to send power to it, I have this unit that I got from Walmart and it gives you a cigarette lighter outlet and two 2.1 amp USBs. And I've put dialect grease into both of these to both keep water and garbage out and to help prevent any corrosion from happening because well, water and crap can get to it. Um, to power it, I have the negative cable right here going to the ring terminal uh, that is connected to the battery. And then the positive cable comes up through here and connects right there. That yellow connector right there connects to this wire here, which is red with a white stripe, which goes down to the ignition. You can actually just remove the couple of screws from the ignition uh, and unplug this harness right here, which is the ignition harness, and the whole ignition will come right off the bike, and you can then cut that wire and tie into it. I've never seen a VTX that utilized that wire. The other three wires are utilized. One is hot, and the other two are switched. Um, I have another VTX there, an 06 1300R. That wire was also unutilized on that bike, so I did the same thing on that bike. So when you turn the key on, you can see the little LED popped on and then it goes on and off with the key. So this will drain your battery or anything because it's switched off the key. Now when you do all your connections, I like to use these guys for connecting to the battery and these guys for inline connections. Now these are a heat shrink style connector, both of these are. So once you've crimped them, you heat them up with a heat gun or a lighter, whatever, and they shrink and kind of glue themselves to the wire. This helps keep them more watertight. Another trick that I like to use for watertight connections is dialectic grease. I will actually take and squirt dialectic grease in here inside this center section, the steel piece. I will put some dialectic grease on both, both ends in there and that will just give me another layer of protection to prevent corrosion. And, you know, when you're working with electrical, especially on a motorcycle where nothing is waterproofed, uh, you know, everything is exposed to the elements, it's a very good idea to make certain that everything that you are working with um, is as watertight as you can get it. So this seems to work really well. I've done this on a few bikes now. I've never had a problem. So uh, I hope this helped you. Uh, you can also utilize this second open USB here to power, say, a GPS or any other device that you can charge off a 2.1 amp USB. And you could plug into the socket, uh, cigarette socket as well. Um, I will get a rubber plug to plug that one. I utilize it for connecting a small 12 volt air compressor that uh, I use to pump my tires up when I don't have access to shop air um, or uh, also can be used as a jump point uh, with one of those cigarette lighter jump packs that charges your battery. Uh, though I would not recommend uh, using those uh, except in an emergency. I've had problems with those things melting wires. But, uh, so there you go. You will need to remove the fuel tank, obviously, and the seat in order to do this, as well as the side cover. Um, I have other videos showing how to do uh, both of those items, um, or how to remove both of those items. The side covers are very easy. Just grab them and they just pop right off. They're held, they're literally only held on by this rubber grommet, this rubber grommet, and this rubber grommet. And here's the back of the side cover for you. You can see 
it's just got three little prongs that push into those rubber grommets. So just uh, wiggle them a little bit and they pop right off. And uh, that's about it. So I hope this helps somebody.